we have gathered to discuss a very serious health issue caused by the dengue virus. So after the COVID-19, this is the second one. Simultaneously, still COVID-19 is continued by another outbreak. So we will focus about the dengue virus. That what is the dengue virus? First, I think we should go to the contents of the today's seminar. The contents include what is dengue and dengue fever, dengue hemorrhagic fever, and what are the signs and symptoms of the dengue fever, signs and symptoms of the dengue hemorrhagic fever, and dengue virus in humans. The mode of transmission is mosquito. The most common mosquito is the Aedes aegypti. However, sometimes in other species of the Aedes, that is called as the Aedes albopictus, they can also cause this disease. Dengue virus mostly causes the two forms of the infections. Number one, dengue fever, and other form is the dengue hemorrhagic fever. So, what is the dengue fever? Dengue fever is a painful illness with high fever caused by the dengue virus and transmitted through bite of mosquitoes. Now, what are the signs and symptoms? How can we detect that patient is suffering from the dengue fever? The first sign and symptoms that mostly observed in the patient that's the high fever and leaded by the headache, eye pain, nausea and vomiting, and joint and muscle pain, rashes on body, and even there is a back pain. Sometimes this disease also called as back throat pain due to the means pain in whole body. Now, what is the dengue? First, the manifestation that was the dengue fever. After this, maybe this disease can enter into the dengue hemorrhagic fever. So, how can we explain the dengue hemorrhagic fever? It is a severe form of the dengue fever and uh, it is high fever accompanied by bleeding. So what are the signs and symptoms of the dengue hemorrhagic fever? The first sign of the dengue fever is the low level of the platelets. That is the reason or cause of the bleeding in large numbers of the patients. After this, there is a frequent vomiting, blood plasma leakage within the body, abdominal pain, and finally there is a bleeding. So this bleeding can be in form of the nose bleeding as well also eye bleeding and even also there is a gum bleeding. So this is the, we can see the final stage or secondary form of the infection caused by the dengue virus that is very life threatening. Now dengue virus which is the responsible of these manifestations dengue uh, fever and hemorrhagic fever. So dengue virus is one type of the viruses belongs to the family Flaviviridae and uh, the, there are four different serotypes and this is the reason there is a problem to uh, be successful in the, in the effective vaccine because there were four serotypes of this virus molecule and even there is a envelope and the structure also contain the capsid with some other proteins vector is this disease is transmitted through mosquito vector so we can also uh, should know about the mosquito vector the different characters that the Aedes aegypti Aedes aegypti it is a female mosquito and there is a black and white strips on the body and leg these are the black and white dots are the identification size of this mosquito and also the main and other comparison differentiate this mosquito from the other mosquitoes they have a large size also, uh, they, they breed in the clean and stagnant water, means even uh, clean water is present found in our home openly, so they can also breed in that water. Most active, when means this mosquito bites, most active two hours before the sunset and active in dark or shaded places. So these are the different characteristics of this mosquito that is responsible for the transmission of the dengue virus into humans. Mode of transmission, how this virus transmits to the humans. Firstly, if any person infected with the dengue virus, so when a mosquito bites, it will carry the virus and finally this virus will replicate within the mosquito and within the 8 to 10 days, 
after the replication, when this mosquito will bite any other healthy person, then that healthy person will also infect it within 10 to 13 days. So this is the of the infection of the dengue virus through the mosquito Aedes aegypti. Epidemiology, dengue is present in over 150 countries and more than 40% of the world's population is at risk areas. The most reported cases in Latin America, Southeast Asia and the Western Pacific area are so present in some African countries and this virus very fastly spreading to the remaining parts of the world. Now, Dengue Pakistan, what is the status of the Pakistan? The first outbreak of the dengue was confirmed in 1994 and so on and other mild outbreak was observed in 2005 and up to the 2010 there is a tremendous increase of the dengue cases in Pakistan. In 2020, 47,120 confirmed cases with 75 deaths were reported. In 2021, 48,906 cases were observed with 183 deaths. Now, current status of the dengue virus in 2022 up to the September. According to report of the National Institute of Health, NIH Islamabad, up to the September, the uh, overall 24,967 dengue virus cases were reported with 67 deaths. Now, what are the reasons of this current outbreak? As the rapid spread is due to the inadequate sanitation and waste disposal, irregular monsoon rain, rising temperature linked to the climate change and also lack of vector control strategy. There is no strategy to control the vector. Because in this case, there is a transmission of the disease is due to the mosquito. So in this way, there is no any proper strategy to control the uh, vector. Unsafe drinking water and even lack of proper diagnosis system. This is big problem, diagnosis system. Even uh, all of you will know if we go to the villages in remote areas, there is no any pro 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 proper diagnosis system. Even the doctors mostly prescribe the medicine without any test. If there is a viral infection, either it's a parasitic infection, doctor just prescribe the antibiotics, antibiotics. And that's the reason that uh, today we face the most of the vector, they have become resistant against the antibiotics. In street, this uh, disease, there is no any specific treatment for this disease. However, the patients infected dengue usually recovers in 1 to 12 weeks. Normally, if they have a, a means strong immune system and no any other complication, they can recover within 1 to 2 weeks. The proper use of anti-fever drugs can relieve the fever. However, aspirin containing some drugs means uh, they should not be used because they can become worse in and maybe they become the response for the bleeding. In serious cases, some hospitals, they also use the uh, supportive treatment, for example, the platelets transmission. If there is a reduced level of the platelets, then immediately there should be the platelets transmission to the patient. Vaccination, in 2016, partially effective vaccine of our dengue virus became commercially available with the brand name Dengvaxia. However, the vaccine is not common and only available in some specific countries. So, so since there is no specific treatment of dengue and yet no effective vaccine interest, so what is the solution? Therefore, only the prevention is the most effective way to avoid the dengue disease. Prevention and control, uh, there should be the prevent the patient from the being bitten by mosquitoes using nets. If the patient is infected this disease, then means must they should use the mosquito nets to avoid the spread of the transmission of this virus. Use of mosquito nets should be common in dengue reported areas and also should apply mosquito repellents over exposed parts of the body and even in clothes. The insecticides like a squire to keep the mosquitoes away in the homes. Install mosquito nets and doors to avoid to introduce the mosquitoes in a home. Keep the environment clean and remove the stagnant water if there is a, uh, in our homes. 
to uh, prevent the breeding of these mosquitoes. Cover water containers <coughs> so tightly that mosquitoes cannot get in away. Now this is also important. If you suspect, if uh, any person feels that if there is a means, uh, sign and symptoms related with the dengue, the most important thing to do to see a doctor. Because if we wait, maybe this uh, the first form may be converted into the second uh, hemorrhagic form, then it will be life threatening. Always, everyone know that prevention is essential. That prevention is the better than cure. So these are the prevention and control. Now, what is our responsibility? What is our responsibility during this dengue outbreak? We belong to the educated means, uh, society. So what is our responsibility? What we can do for our society, for our family members, and for other population? So we should educate the people about the prevention and control of the dengue virus, arrange lectures and seminars to provide awareness about the dengue virus, what is the mode of transmission, how this virus is transmitted from the person, and what are the characteristics of the uh, mosquito, and how can we compare this mosquito with the other common mosquitoes. Arrange diagnosis specialties in remote areas, and also uh, we should also locate the hot spots of the mosquito breeding and inform health authorities to take the measures. Challenges for dengue control. So what are the things, what are the problems that hinders to control the dengue virus? Pression, and prevalence and laboratory diagnostics of dengue. No proper vector mosquito control measures. Limitations in essential resources for healthcare professionals and high levels of the poverty. This is the major problem. Most of the disease they are transmitted. These are the poverty is the main problem. What are the recommendations? We should apply chemical and environmental management techniques to control the spread of the dengue through the fumigation and large scale. Use the insecticide to rural habitats, improve the solid waste disposal. This is also a big problem that we should also improve the solid waste disposal. A strict surveillance policy. So in this way, a strict surveillance policy should be applied by the government and detect the hot spots, <coughs> mosquito breeding sites, monitor active dengue cases, monitor healthcare management. Even the, uh, the healthcare, they are working for this project, they should be also monitored, they either they are working properly or not. Use media to promote the healthy practices. This is also uh, very good that through media, we can spread the awareness by using the different healthy practices. So what should do? Drinking plenty of fluids means through the media we can uh, spread this. That means uh, the people should drink the plenty of fluids. Intake of oral rehydration salts, <coughs> keeping body temperature below 39 centigrade, and there should be a lab test like a CBC because CBC is so the uh, emphasize the different parameters of the blood, including the platelets. So when we know about the platelets, either increase or decrease, then we can detect this disease. Thank you very much. And uh, you can see here, uh, we have <coughs> our YouTube channel, Academically Lectures. And uh, already we have uploaded many lectures, inshallah. In future also we will upload many uh, lectures related with the health, also the other biological lectures. So thanks very much.